from the garden before Jesus was betrayed by the kiss of Judas. And let us look at Matthew 26, 42. Matthew 26, 42. Matthew 26, 42. Amen. Matthew 26, 42. It reads, He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And then we looked, there was a prayer for Jesus' enemies, those who mocked him and told him that he was God to take himself off the cross. Let's look at Luke 23, Luke 23 and 34. Luke 23 and 34. Luke 23. 34. And it reads as such. I still hear pages to me. It reads as such. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, and they parted his raiment and cast lots. Then there was a third prayer. There was a third prayer. It was a prayer for his followers, knowing that at times we'll be lured by the pleasures of this world. Let's look at John 17, 15. Right after Luke. Right after Luke. Amen. John 17, 15. John 17, 15. It says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading here and in application of his holy word. You may take your seats. Amen. 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 Let everybody do and say amen. Amen. That way I'm sure I get amen out of everybody before the service is over. In the first prayer, we see Jesus praying while facing the cross, facing the ultimate sacrifice for sin, knowing he would become sin and face momentary separation from the Father, which for the Son of God was unbearable. When Jesus died on the cross, he died physically and spiritually, becoming sin caused a rift in the relationship that was later restored with the resurrection and his resurrection of all power. Jesus, while on the cross, became adultery. He became living immorality. He became the things that we do in the dark. Amen, somebody. He became the things that we used to do before we found him. He became the things that we may do in the future. Amen. The second, Jesus went on and prayed, knowing the acts of the accusers, the acts of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Their acts and motivations were out of fear, and they perpetuated lies, confusion, and divisions. Sounds like some church folk that we know on today. Amen. Amen. People who walk in the building and spread confusion, spread division, and try to undermine anything that's being done to the glory of God. So these were the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Um, Jesus was falsely accused by those who claimed to serve and love God. Jesus was praying for them that their hearts would be changed. They felt Jesus threatened the establishment and was shaking the foundation of hypocrisy. We talked about this today earlier about how they felt like Jesus was taking something from them. And what they had, they didn't even understand that they did not own. Amen. Just like what you have is not yours, but it belongs to the Lord. Amen. Brother Colin just testified about that. Amen. God will take some of your stuff when you forget that your stuff comes from God. Amen. Then the third prayer, uh, praying that we would remain steadfast and protected by the provisions of God. We should be praying for ourselves as we strive to please God, knowing that it isn't always easy. Jesus was praying on that times would get tough, that times would get rough, and that things wouldn't always go the way we want them to go. He was praying, know that you'll get discouraged at times when our hearts are broken and we can't see our way. Jesus, the Son of God, came so that we could stand in the face of problems and not fold under the pressures of this world. I know some of you might be thinking, well, uh, I know that Jesus said uh, uh, when he prayed, but what do I do? My advice would be for you to go to the book of Matthew, the 6th chapter, the 9th to the 13th verse. You ain't got to go there right now, but it says, After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Ah, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have an example, and I want you to know that prayer doesn't have to be big words that you see sometimes on Sundays in the pulpits. It does not have to be a long thing that's drawn out for 45 minutes. Amen, somebody. That is not necessarily what prayer is all about. 
Prayer is when you have a communication with yes. God. And then you have to understand that God knows your heart and God knows your needs. Sometimes we can get sidetracked by the media. We can get sidetracked by TV church. Amen, somebody. Sometimes we can even get sidetracked by reality TV. Amen. Storage wars. Uh, teen mom, etc. Amen, somebody. I like storage wars. We can get distracted by our families, uh, our cousin, cousin Ray Ray, cousin Lolo, Shaniqua. Then we can get distracted by the in-laws. Amen, somebody. We can get distracted by people all up in our business and ain't worried about theirs at home. Amen. Yeah. We get distracted by work, going in, worrying about if we're going to get promoted. Amen. Amen. Understanding that God does all the promoting. You can't do it on your own anyway. Doesn't matter what you go in and do. Yeah. Guess where some of the best employees got laid off? during this economic downturn. And then we get distracted by friends. Friends who don't care if you live or die. Amen. They ride out with you as long as they can get high with you. Amen. They ride with you as long as they can get drunk with you. Amen. They ride with you as long as they can go somewhere with you and eat with your family. But they don't care whether you live or you die. Often we push our prayer lives back to the back burner. And to the side, we sit them on the shelf. Uh, and it's time that we start sending some email, amen, instead of the emails that we send. You know the ones I'm talking about, don't you? Send this to ten people if you get it back, you're blessed. Uh, 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 send this to five people in five minutes. God don't call you on the phone. Uh, uh, email this to your mama and your daddy gonna come back. Email this to your daddy and your mama gonna come back. Amen. Just email this around the world and God is gonna move. <laughs> A thousand emails will not make God do anything. Amen. Amen. Nothing that he don't want to do and nothing that's not in his will. Amen. Amen. So stop sending me all them forwards. Praise God. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> we should be getting on our knees first, asking God for forgiveness, and then asking for our prayers to be answered. Amen. Amen. You got to understand that there's a process there. You got to ask God to forgive you so you can walk up with a clean heart to ask him for what you need. Don't send no email. God don't move. I'm waiting. I just hit send to 10 people. Then in five minutes, you get caught in your office. You're laid off. <laughs> My point is, those emails don't do anything, but your prayer and your relationship with God does everything. Now then, when we look at prayer, we ought to understand that we should not pray amiss. Amen. Praying amiss means you pray for things that you can't even handle. Amen. Sometimes uh, women praying for husbands knowing they ain't ready. Amen. Sometimes men praying for wives knowing they ain't ready. Amen. Then you praying for a car and ain't got no gas to move it out. Amen. <laughs> praying for things that we cannot handle, then getting butt hurt when you don't get it. Yeah. We should not pray amiss. We ought to pray in God's will. Uh, Sometimes we forget to pray about everything. We pray about some things because we can think we handle or we think we can handle everything. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'll curse them out and then they'll stop doing what they're doing. Amen. I can handle that. Uh, I'll whoop them and then they'll stop. Amen. I can handle that. I'll whoop Christian. He keep on doing what he's doing. Amen. I'll, I'll stop giving them money to buy drugs. But guess what? They'll keep on buying drugs. Amen. Prayer can fix things. We cannot ultimately fix things. Uh, MC Hammer said it best. He has a song. Amen. Y'all know I like to sing songs. Uh, MC Hammer said, I like to. Wait a minute. Hold on. No, that ain't what he said. He said, You have to pray just to make it today. You have to pray. Just to make it today. We must pray. Oh, they don't know that? Okay, well, y'all look it up on YouTube, MC Hammond, we must pray. We must pray because we can't handle the demons of our past alone. Amen, somebody. Uh, we must pray because we can't handle the abandonment issues on our own. We must pray because we can't handle our financial situations ourselves. We must pray because we cannot heal the mental scars and wounds that the physical abuse has left. The times we live in require us and should motivate us to pray and seek his face. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7, 13 and 14, it says, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. This scripture gives us a promising proclamation. When we turn from the things of the world, Pray to God, he will hear and heal our situations. Prayer can get you what you need, having a little talk with Jesus and telling him all about your what? Your trouble. Jesus, you know Jesus, the great example, the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the bridge over troubled waters, God in the flesh. He prayed during the most troubling times, facing death, facing separation from the Father and denial of the disciples. 
I remember being in the army, placed in a situation that I couldn't change on my own, that money nor family could fix. No one told me, but the spirit inside of me longed for a conversation with God. Um, I had been introduced with God and baptized when I was 14 years old, but I didn't have a true relationship. Amen. That's how we know the water doesn't do it. Amen. I prayed about this situation that I had that was impossible with man, but became possible with God. And then not too long ago, not too long ago, I was in a hospital. for uh, I think it was right before my 31st birthday with the mass in my colon. I had it removed, almost overdosed on morphine. Deacon Dennis was there. But I prayed, and late in the midnight hour, God turned it around. Um, I was restored. I was delivered and healed. The Bible tells us that men ought to always pray. Always, meaning always, not some days, but always. Not when you just feel good, but when you feel bad as well. You ought to pray always. Uh, I thank God for the power of prayer. The Bible also tells us that the prayers of the righteous, somebody knows this, availeth much. Righteous means being right, seeking that which pleases God. So if your prayers aren't being answered, it may be time for you to check up, amen, line up, and reevaluate yourself in your relationships. It might be time for you to ask for your needs and stop asking just God for what you want. You need clothes, but your clothes doesn't have to be true religion jeans, amen. You amen. need a home, but it doesn't have to be a home in Paradise Valley. You need a car, it doesn't have to be a Honda, it can be a, amen, somebody. Amen. Jesus prayed for us. We need to pray for ourselves and one another. Pray to solve problems. Pray to make decisions. When you get done, pray, pray, pray. And guess what? Pray some more. The people of Israel prayed for a Messiah, but Jesus didn't fit the mold. He didn't meet their expectations. He taught how to live, how to pray, and how we should pray and why we should pray. He was taken under the cover of night. Most of you know this story. Under the cover of darkness, beat from judgment hall to judgment hall, tried on trumped up charges and lies. He was found just by Governor Pilate. But his own people continued with the plan to rid themselves of Jesus. I can see many praying for this end. Then he was placed on a cross for all the world to see, which was an emblem of shame, which became a symbol of God's glory. Then from the cross, Jesus made a loud shout, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Pray with us in mind. Jesus hung on the cross, pierced in the side, and gave up the ghost. Jesus died into the earth, reeled and rocked. Amen, somebody. Into the dead, got up out the grave, and the people picketed at the streets of Jerusalem. I'm sure somebody was. Pray. Jesus was placed in a borrowed tomb, but I'm sure somebody was. Pray. Jesus stayed in the grave until God was satisfied, but I'm sure somebody was. Pray. Jesus rose on the third day. He rose, and I'm sure somebody was. Pray. He rose with all power, the power to answer big prayer, the power to answer what we may consider small prayers, because I know somebody was. Pray. Does anybody know he will answer the prayer for a husband or a wife? Does anybody know he'll answer the prayer for a new job? Does anybody know he will answer the prayer for peace of mind? Does anybody know he will answer the prayer for understanding? Does anybody know he will answer the prayer for joy in the midst of your trials and your tribulations? Understanding that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Does anybody know he can let you walk out the hospital when you should have been paralyzed? Does anybody know that he'll answer your prayers no matter what it is? Amen. He'll answer your prayers when it looks bad. Amen. He'll answer your prayers when it feels bad. He'll answer your prayers when it seems bad. Amen. We must pray. We must pray. Church, guess what? We must pray. I'm sure you're going to leave this building. Pray. You, when you go to work, you're going to be pray. Remember, if you don't pray, you cannot get an answer. Remember, if you don't pray, nobody will answer. Amen, somebody. One of my role models uh, it sang a song that was originally uh, uh, written by James Cleveland. Bishop Charles Ellis says, I tried to get him to sing it yesterday, but we had some, uh, some difficulties. Amen. It, the song says, I love to pray in and out of season, anytime for any reason. Prayer is the key. Faith unlocks the door. Ask anything, it shall be done. He'll hear every word you say. And while you're praying, he's on his way. Prayer will fix it every time. When you're in your mess, you should be. Pray. When things get rough, you should be. Pray. When they talk about you, guess what you should be. Pray. When they look at you funny, guess what you should be. Pray. No matter what it is, you ought to be. Pray. Not one day, but every day. Pray. Not just Monday, but Tuesday. Pray. Not just Tuesday, but Wednesday. Pray. Not just Wednesday, but Thursday. 